Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And the title of this video is Slow Down and Make a Card. So guess what? You're gonna see some real time slow down coloring. So here we have the stamp set. Look how cute this is with all of these slots on it. Aren't they adorable? I'm gonna color just one of them. And that's what happens when I color slowly. We're just gonna get one of them done. I started off with an E81 on this one because I wanted to see how far that branch would go. And it gets kind of fat really quickly. And I didn't like the fact that it's going to get fat really quickly. So I decided to use the technique from the Autumn Scenes class over at artclasses.com. If you haven't taken that one and you think, well, gee whiz, that's ridiculous. Why would I take that class now? Because it's not Autumn. Well, take the same techniques, and for those who've already taken the class, take the same techniques and change them into spring and summer colors. And you can do the same kinds of trees. I'm not going to be doing a spring trees class, I don't think. Maybe eventually, if there's enough outcry for it in a couple of years, but I have a lot of other things on the plate that I want to cover, because you can just take these same trees that, that you were making with all of your beautiful oranges and reds and yellows, and just change them into a variety of greens. And you can make them in all different kinds of greens too. Experiment with which ones layer over top of each other really well. For this particular card, I just wanted something to cover up that giant big fat branch because it clearly had to get bigger and bigger. You could make a whole set of tree branches out of it. You could do this one kind of sideways a little bit so that he sits a little more at an angle rather than hanging straight down. Kind of different ways that you can deal with a stamp like this but i wanted to have just the tree hanging down from above him with this one branch hanging down that he's holding on to and i'm just going to use a bunch of different greens and there's not really a rhyme or reason for why i was doing it i just wanted to see what would work and that's what happens when you slow down in color just take some time to try something new and different and especially if you've got the technique down for this tree, this particular lesson, which was lesson one in the class, I saw more people using this technique than I did any of the other trees in the class. So this one, I know you guys have got it nailed. You know how to do this. So just change up your different, uh, different tree strokes, your, your brush strokes and your marker strokes in order to make it a more spring or summery tree. How easy is that? You take one class and you have year round trees because you could do this with all different kinds of greens. You could also put flowers up there in, this, in the, the uh, tree itself. Lots of different fun. But let's talk about how the branch is gonna go up in there as well because the branch needs to have some negative coloring around a few of those leaves so that I have, uh, I guess, a, a little way of making it show that it's coming from within the tree branch. You could put the whole tree branch in the front, but that would defeat the purpose of why I covered it up with leaves because I just didn't want that big chunk of brown showing. But I am going to put a little bit of brown in between the, the leaves so that it's kind of peeking through in a couple spots. I am going to darken the colors up there in the, the leaves, but this is going to allow it to look like this is part of the tree. It's kind of going up inside of it. And I decided to play with a YG97 and it didn't work all that great, but you know, I think by the time I get it all done and add more colors to it and just keep keep adding and keep changing, it's going to come out great in the end because I did like how this card came out, but may, may or may not have been a good choice to make this one. You can try different greens that you have and see which ones work. But I kind of got myself vested in it by the time I started. And I'm a big believer in when you have a piece of paper and you've started coloring it, even if something goes awry, like, oh my gosh, I picked that color, it didn't look right, what the heck do I do now? Well, try continuing. Just plod on and see what happens because you have already ru ruined this piece of paper. If that's what happens, then you've already wrecked it. So why not learn something from it? At the very least, you'll have a little bit more education under your belt and you'll know what colors work and don't work and you never know, you might be able to find some techniques to cover the error or change things, make it happen in a different way. And then you can apply that the next time you color something. And in this particular case, even though I wasn't really thrilled with it, I was watching the color 
of that YG97 start to disappear. And I took the whole tree and kind of knocked it back a little bit more by using YG95, a lot of it, so that it would make the whole thing look more olive rather than that bright color because the YG95 or YG97 was just too dull to fit with the other colors that I'd already used. But it worked really well once I started putting the YG95 in there. So that was an interesting learning of how to make a tree like this. So now I'm gonna jump down to do the sloth. And again, what, which I do with a lot of my cards, if you start with the hardest part, if you wanna do a background and you're not sure that it's gonna work, do your background first. Cause then you don't feel the pressure for the rest of the card if the first part didn't work, then you don't spend your time doing the rest of the image. So if you've got a background that's going to be challenging, try doing that part first. And especially if you do what I did, which was leave this in the misty. So if I needed to restamp it, it's already in place. So don't take it all apart yet. And then you'll be able to real quickly go back and restamp it if you need to. But don't waste that piece of paper. Just take your time and work at it and see what happens if you keep adding color. Because I think for the most part, that's what I find to be the biggest problem with a lot of people's coloring is that they don't take it far enough. You just got to keep coloring. If you've noticed with a lot of my cards, things look like a hot mess until they don't. Like that tree up there looked really bad until it didn't. And that's the kind of thing that happens with art. Like you'll just hit a point when it starts to work and keep going until you hit that point. So I'm going to add a couple different colors to my sloth's fur and going for some really nice darks so that I have some good contrast and keep adding my mid-tone and my light tone until I get all that to blend. I think these sloths are really hysterical and cute. You can look them up on Google and find different colorations of sloths. So there's some that have more of a, uh, a brown, brown fur on their faces and their tummies. Others are a little more cream or white. And there's ones that have brown in their fur and there's ones that have black in their fur, just all different kinds of colors. And they, these would even be fun doing them in total like rainbow sloths. <laughs> That'd be hilarious because they're not known for being like party animal type things but it would be fun to make them look like they're having a wild party, even though they're sloths. So they're really cute. I like, I love the art impressions images. They do really fun animals and I love coloring unique things and they have some of the most unique stamps out there. And the other sloths in this set are really cute. There's one that's hugging a little heart and I was debating trying to do that one because I want to color it with the thing upside down and see if I can figure out how to do that because he's not really holding on to anything so I'd have to figure out how to adapt the stamp which is why I decided to stick stick with this one and show you the tree and talk about using that class for uh, for some of your spring cards instead because I thought that would be a more valuable lesson for you I do try to teach things here on YouTube when I'm creating a video for you so you get to learn something and then go out and apply it so I'm going to use the same colors in the hat that I had, or at least some of the same colors that I had up above, instead of having anything wild in this one, because as I just said, sloths are not known for being wild. So he's going to have green party accoutrements. <laughs> he's going to have a green hat and a green balloon. And here again, I tried that YG95 in there and went, oops, and I just covered it with YG17. And that tended to brighten it back up again. So if you have something like that, just go over it with something else and see what happens. What's the worst you can do is toss the piece of paper and start over again or cut out another balloon and glue it on top. So for this one, all I did was glue it onto a card base. Very simple, kept it straight up and clean. And I think it's really adorable. And I hope that you're gonna use your fall trees to create some really fun spring and summer carts this year. I want to see those. Go tag me when you make something like that, or better yet, share it in the Art Classes Facebook group, which is linked in the description down below. We have a great Facebook group, and it's been a little slow lately, so come share your art from classes and how you're applying your lessons, and I'd love to see you. All right, take care. Bye-bye.